we just we found a really great rhythm working together and yeah that's kind of how it came wow. and it was like the last song i just thought isn't it tragic and i was just like i think that's the album okay <laughs> <laughs> that's how the title came about <laughs> literally <laughs> Uh, my name is Adam. I appreciate you doing this. Uh, this cool. podcast is about you, your journey in music, and we'll talk about the new record you're putting out with Dead Sarah. Great. You have all day? I do. Do you have <laughs> all day? <laughs> I got nowhere to be. It's <laughs> <laughs> well, a long one. Okay. Well, where were you born and raised? Let's start there. Well, LA. Oh, okay. You're from originally from LA? Yeah. Well, I mean, we all are. Our, the whole band is. That's cool. I'm from San Diego. Not a whole lot oh, of us born and raised in, in Southern California. Are you a Padres fan? Um, no. a little bit. Not okay. a not, not a huge. I like the Padres uh, in the '90s when they had like Tony Gwynn and stuff. But I never like kept liking them. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, I get it. A Dodgers fan. Yeah. Okay. And I was just like the rivalry right now. Oh, I sure. Wanted to, I wanted to talk about that. <laughs> I haven't really honestly been following. I moved to Nashville about six months ago. Oh, um, sick. Yeah, we love it here. Hence nothing behind you. Right. Yeah, well, actually, we, I was just telling Jenny, we just moved into the, our house. We were waiting for our house for six months while we were here. Oh, so we cool. Just moved in. Um, and so Where in Nashville? Actually, uh, south by Franklin. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. So down there, and, and the birds. my girlfriend's from there. Yeah, so I go there a lot. Oh, really? Yeah. So I started. That's like the the other place that I go to more than fucking here in LA. Just sitting is, here is, rotting in LA. She's from where south of Nashville, down here. No, in, she's. In the um, oh. No, 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 no. Uh, God, what is it? I just want to say Bel Air, but it's not Bel Air. It's been a while since I've been there. It's a uh, up like the richer area. Oh, um, like posh. <laughs> you screwed me up by saying Bel Air. I know. See, <laughs> uh, Brentwood, close to Brentwood, okay. not that posh. Okay, I'm not sure then. Fuck, I can't believe I'm forgetting it. Anyway, it's a nice spot. <laughs> it is. Okay. It really is. But it's not like like where you guys are, which is like cooler. I, I think like more. I mean, I know Franklin's a little bit out of the way, but like. I haven't I haven't been able to go to Franklin very often because we don't know as many people out there, but mm -hmm. it's nice. We really want to get yeah. to it. Yeah. We have two yeah. kids, so it's like one of those things where it's so school cool. district is like key and <laughs> everything. Yeah. Else. But so uh, cool. Yeah, we love it here. But I loved growing up in Southern California as well. So well talk talk to me about growing up in LA because that is quite different than growing up in San Diego. I mean, there's a lot more happening all the time. It's LA. true. I mean, I I feel like I think I would have been better off like growing up somewhere like Franklin. You know what I mean? Like I I, I love a smaller I don't know like for family and stuff like that. But anyway, I mean I I don't know any difference, so I don't know how to really explain growing up here. You know, um, all I can kind of really say is like when i go to a smaller town i'm like god it's so much more like homey you know right and like a bigger city it's just kind of like everything like you were saying there's so much mm -hmm. um so which is kind of cool you know a lot of diversity and stuff um but a lot of crimes so um i think at like you know the late 90s the early the, the mid 90s um my parents were like, yeah, there's way too much crime right now. So I went to um, a boarding school like in Santa Clarita for a bit. Okay. Yeah. And then there I learned to play guitar and just kind of hunkered down a little bit, which is kind of great for me, for somebody who was very, very high energy all mm -hmm. the time. I was able to just kind of hone in and focus. And I just made a band and we that's all I did, you know, there. And then I went to high school up here, um, like La Cunata, like all mm -hmm. like right outside. Yeah. Um, and then from there, I started a band with Susie and then. Wow. Okay. That's kind of been the, but it's been music driven, like since, you know, the age of 11. Wow. You know? So you started yeah. a band that early on. I mean, yeah. in middle school, it sounds like. Yeah. I was wow. like, that was all like, once I picked up a guitar, I was like, oh, this is it. Yeah. Was guitar but your first instrument? Yeah. Okay. 
but it wasn't like I'm gonna be a singer I'm gonna be this I was just like I really want to start a band you know and I want to be a really good guitar player once I started like learning guitar but like when you're kind of just there you just learn on your own Right. You know, you have like guitar world subscriptions and like guitar player, you know, and like, mm-hmm. but still that was like way over my head, you know, just rip out the pictures and put them up. But um, uh, it was, yeah, I mean, like I had singers in my band at the time and I just never thought of myself as a singer. And it wasn't until like we were doing, I think we went to San Diego. Was it San Diego? Where's the California State Fair? Uh, the state fair. Uh, yeah. I, I don't. I don't oh, okay. know. Anyway, there was we like played the San Diego it. fair. That was yeah. like the Del Mar fair, but it, that became like a traveling thing. Okay. <laughs> I feel like there's one okay. like Alameda <laughs> in like yeah. Orange County. <laughs> I wonder if the, if it's even a thing anymore. It was the state fair, like it was the California state fair. Okay, and I don't remember anyway, the state fair, but I'm sure maybe yeah. it was up by Sacramento or something. Who knows? I mean, California is yeah. so big. I know. <laughs> so we did like a California tour, I remember. Okay. And we like raised money for like our school and stuff. And um really, how was, old were you when you did that? It was like 14, but that was you then, did a tour at, I mean, it was like but not still. really a tour, like going to like yeah, people's mm-hmm. houses, you know, like wow. And then we did the California State Fair. Um Anyway, it wasn't then that I was just like, fuck, I need to be the singer because uh-huh. the other ones were a little unreliable, you know? Okay. <laughs> Even at that age, I was like, yeah, this is this is way <laughs> You're too not taking this seriously. To, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. So what drew you to guitar? Yeah, what drew you to guitar when you were going to school there? I mean, there was like a guitar that had a, maybe three strings on it that was just kind of being passed around. Like, this is the new thing that people are doing. And it's mm-hmm. a guitar. And um, I I picked it up and somebody showed me I forget how to what it was, but I just remember looking at it going, whoa, this is like, this is the fucking coolest thing, ever. Um, and I was like, this is it. And I I was playing sports like religiously before that, you know. I was skating. I was even playing like tag football I was ba- a lot of basketball yeah. um it was everything like I just loved sports and then after that I was just like wait a minute this is my out for sports <laughs> because I know I'm not going to be doing sports for very long these boys are getting a lot bigger now I'm not going to be so great no but then uh yeah that's when I started playing wow um, and a little intermittent skating because I always loved skating but like it was roller uh, skating or ice skating oh no like uh skateboarding Oh, skateboarding. I yeah. love skateboarding too. That's awesome. Yeah. That's actually yeah. how I got into a lot of bands was from like yeah. the early skate videos. I mean, Sick. Yeah. they used to have oh such God. good soundtrack. I mean, I'm sure they still do. I'm just too old to still buy skate videos, but yeah. <laughs> CKY was, like, was Oh one. yeah. CKY was great. It was sick. There's some trans worlds, like rad videos that we used to mm-hmm. just like, oh, it was the best man. And yeah. we were all in bands, you know? Of course, we all bands, played music, music yeah. and skateboarding. <laughs> yeah, it was like that. It was wow. great. Wow, that's rad. Okay, so um, well, you said you went to, you ended up going to high school then in Los Angeles. So you yep. stopped going to boarding school. You went to high school in LA, and that's when you met Susie. Or like, how did is that? Ye- the early yeah, I, I of the met band? her. Yeah, it okay. wasn't there. It was like, um, she was mutual friends with a friend of mine. You know, and it was just like, oh, dude, let's hang out. And then she was hanging out with her and we were all just kind of became like a group of friends. And and then it wasn't like till about a year into like we just hang out, drink and do whatever the fuck we would do Mm -hmm. and go to shows and stuff. Fans of Warped Tour and shit. Um, So we just like love listening to music. She introduced me a lot more to like more grunge, um, even more like punk rock, you know, because at that point I was like really heavy into like the 60s, 70s. So she kind of like, we like started like sharing each other's music and stuff. And, um, and then I, re- I found out she played guitar. I was like, what do you, what you play guitar? And she knew how to tune. And I was like, you know how to fucking, t- you got an ear girl and you got the fucking, <laughs> you got the attitude to be a guitar player. I don't know why you're not a fucking, like, you're not doing this every day. Uh-huh. So it, it, it wasn't then. And uh, like, I, I started like, I was like, great, this is my new band. And 
her brother had some drums in the, the basement and I was just like, I'm going to take these. And so we started in her bedroom and um, I was the drummer and she was a guitar player and like scream singer. And that's how we started again. And wow. it was just like so many different things. And then she was the drummer and then I was a guitar player. We we're trying to figure it out and we we're playing right. shows at that point. Were you really? Um, how long? Yeah. Like, did you just pick up the drums because they were there or, or you had you played prior to that? I, I kind of pretty... knew. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> knew a little bit, you know, like we both know enough, you know, to just right. be like, this is great. And we're young enough to suck and still play. And people would be like, all right, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> But we were just so about playing music and just playing like we just loved going out and playing shows, you know, mm -hmm. even if there was seven people there like that was a highlight, you know, mm -hmm. play bars and stuff around here, even up into Glendale. Um, and uh, so many re uh, like a, a lot of incarnations of uh, <laughs> Dead Sarah, we uh, finally settled with Sean as the drummer. Okay. Um, we had a few others before that. And because he was not, he was no longer in another band. It was a friend's band of ours. And we were just like, dude, like, we want it. We want you. You know, we were friends with him and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, it, took, it was, he was a little hesitant because he was in a band that he really believed in and then that wasn't longer. So he had to take a moment, you know. But once he was like decided, like, this is it, this is it, but we're going to fucking do it. And now he's producing our shit too. So right. like the new album, like, you know what I mean? Like, he's really come so fucking far from just being like this drummer um uh so i don't know i don't know how i jumped that far i feel like that was way too no far was... leap of a fucking jump <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay i'm curious to, to know like how old were you guys when you started playing those early shows as dead sarah Did, so it started with to you or was that was that called other things or when did the yeah. the band kind of solidify was it it was always dead sarah Oh no, God! We okay. had so many names. We had so many names. If that's what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So the, it, then it kind of morphed. It was always us too. Yeah. Yeah, it was you two, and then it kind of morphed into what became the band currently. Yeah. yeah. Got you. Okay. Yeah. And was it always just you? You guys both just wanted this for. This was your dream. Like you didn't go to school or anything like else. To, to it was no. just always music. Yeah, I just dropped out, and I was like, "Mom, um, she's like, cool, whatever." And uh, <laughs> I, I left to see, cause she knew that I always wanted to do music and it's right, like, right. But why am I going to stop you and just force you to do school? It's like, this is your life, you know? Okay. Um, That's cool. So, yeah. So I was started a band. I think I was 17, 16 when we started doing just six, I was like 17. So Susie was like 16, 15. So it's like, she's like a year younger than I am. So around there, like we started playing shows it wasn't like every week we'd play a show. It was right. like, like every, Sorry, every God. like reincarnation of Dead Sarah, we'd play a show. So like if we had a drummer or like a, like a drummer that I had way back in the day came mm -hmm. back and he was like, yeah, dude, let's just like, I got this band going, let's do it again, you know? And that didn't last very long. And then I was the bass player for a moment and singer. And like, there was just so many. So every kind, like we'd play a show in that, like, you know, Gotcha. So, uh, um, gosh, I totally lost my train of thought of what, what even okay, you were we asking. Keep going. Yeah, it's all good. Um, well, okay. So you obviously eventually land on dead Sarah and the first, when, when did oh, you yeah. start seeing some success? Like, obviously you had a huge hit with uh, weatherman early on, right. but, but was that kind of the turning point for you? Or like, were you guys having some momentum prior to that song coming out or was it kind of like, this guy gets I mean, the song and it just explodes. Kind of. Yeah. We, I mean, since we were playing shows, even at that age and then coming into like our early adulthood, like we were then asked by a lot of labels and stuff, you know, and we didn't, that wasn't something that was very, um, I don't know. That wasn't something that we were really thinking with. Okay. You know, like it wasn't something that we were just like, oh, we can't wait to sign to this and be this. And like, we had no idea about like, you know, the business side of things, you know, it just seemed very scary. Okay. Um, and so we were approached a lot at that time to like, uh, you know, meetings and all this kind of stuff and asking us questions like, 
where do you where you see yourself in 10 years like i don't fucking know you know what i mean Mm -hmm. we're 18 years old 19 years old like we're not that we're just playing music you know we're still trying to figure it out right but it was a lot of that kind of stuff like well i think you guys should work with this producer this guy and we're like we don't know these people you know so it was a lot of head spinning a lot of so then you start to get very doubtful and it, it just becomes like well, you're very talented. You could do anything you want. And it's just kind of like started split it, like all this kind of like weird stuff that starts to get in the middle of what we love about music. And, mm-hmm. and then we're just like, at that point, we're just like at each other, you know, just like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then it was like a year later where it was just like, we we're still like friends. They just kind of like trying to figure it out. I mean, we're still so young. And, um, we were just like, we had an opportunity to do our own label and we we're like, okay, let's do this. This seems like the fucking right thing to do now. We have a little mm-hmm. space. Um, and then that's when uh, we had Sean and um, and then Susie was dating the bass player at the time. Um, so he was a guitar player and then he was just like, yeah, I'll come in to help out, you know? So he came in and that's when we started um, really honing in on that first album. Wow. And then we had we had our friend Noah Shane at the time he was like producing a friend's band of ours endless hallway. And he was like, yeah, you guys are ready. And we're like, cool. So we just like got the money together to pay him. And we went out to Sonic ranch in Texas and recorded it, you know, and it was our first album. So it was just like a lot of like, what is going on? You know, like Mm -hmm. (laughs) it was like, so he was just trying to like corral us like you know like that was his job as a producer like okay how are we gonna just like get you guys in a room and like get this finished <laughs> um and uh yeah that was done and then you know it just kind of took off on its own and like on our own label you know okay and then you can imagine at that point you know we had a, a lot more understanding of like what the business side was because we started doing it on our own you mm-hmm. know and we did miss a lot of opportunities, you know, but I think that's just part of it. And like, it's all on you, which is great. You know, you can't blame anybody else. So at that point, um, you know, on our second album, we were like, we should, we should sign to another, you know, major. We did that. And then we asked to get off and then we got our record back. So it's like a lot of time spent in between that kind of just busting around with the fucking label side of things and mm-hmm. just like, lawyer stuff so that put like years you know because you can't put anything out and right they really take their time with these things like they don't really care too much i have to say um but they gave us an album and then we released it and but you know time has passed and momentum has shifted and all that kind of stuff that goes with the, the unfortunate uh business of music um so ever since then i mean now that we're with warner um we're we've now it's been 10 years now since that first album so mm-hmm. i feel like we have we're gone way back to just like how we used to do it you know like we did this in our room in our rehearsal room we recorded this in our rehearsal room you know so there was a lot of figuring things out but it's very exciting and that's what i believe helps in an album you know mm-hmm. and all those little things and that's what i love about um albums you know when I was growing up and there is like this weirdness to certain songs and you find out that they did it in their bedroom or as a Mm -hmm. demo and all that kind of stuff is so awesome you know and and going into this album during a pandemic it's our pandemic baby you know and so it had room for a lot of that stuff that we absolutely loved and the, the the authenticity of it um so You know, I'm really, really proud and happy that it turned out to be this way, Mm -hmm. you know, and we took on the challenge and um, I would, I want to say I would do it all over again, but it was a fucking hardest album to make. Only when I say a hardest, it's like when you don't have a help, like an engineer, you Mm -hmm. don't have the proper studio, there's fucking people rehearsing next to you, the patience can be worn thin pretty fast but it was the most fun because of the challenges like that you get to you know to overcome that's what makes things fun and and obviously the sound of it and working very very like retro like um just really going deep into yourself of Mm -hmm. like and being able to have that cocoon for a long time you know 
-hmm. could be a daunting place. You know, you don't have the distractions. You're not showing people to get some kind of reaction from a demo or a song, you know, to be like, oh, fuck. Okay. Yeah, that is good. Cause he likes it. No, mm -hmm. it was like at the end of the day, is it fucking good in the morning? Is it, is it? And so Sean and I became like, we were in there six days a week, a lot of the time, just like really honing in on certain things. Like, but is it, you know? And so that's when I say it was fucking the hardest, but most rewarding. When did you guys start the record? Was it after the pandemic had started? No, it was before. Okay. So did you have to ship gears, I would imagine, on how you were doing the record? So yeah, how did it start? And tell me how it ended up getting to where you guys finished. Okay. I mean, we decided, okay. I mean, we, we started talking with Noah Shane again to do this album. And he was like, all right, guys, well, this has got to be your best album. You know, like you guys come, it's the 10 year mark. And yada 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 we've been through so much and you know so he kind of like hyped it up to be like you know we, we we're going into this and so we started writing we did some demos we showed it to warner and they were like this is great okay great you guys are on board we're gonna sign you this is good we're gonna take you and and then from there we started to get some songs together to start recording with noah like in the room you know like doing old school band production he's in the room showing us like no you keep going i'm not keep going like many many hours so about four songs three songs of him doing that and then we're like great we got the momentum that we need we're going we're just going to the studio literally a week out lockdown happens and so we're like okay fuck well <laughs> at that point it was like okay nobody knows what's going to happen and now keep in mind, Noah has a family. He's, a, he's got a wife, he's got kids. So it wasn't until Warner were, was like, you know what, just go ahead and do it. At, at your rehearsal, do it at home, your respected homes, you know, be safe and let me know everything you guys need. And so we're like, okay, fuck, you know? And then Noah really helped us get like what we needed mm -hmm. sent over and all that kind of stuff and set up. And so we just started setting up and, you know, Noah was no longer in the room. It was like a FaceTime thing. We'd send him stuff and then we'd talk to him, talk to him about the song. And then we would work, 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 and then send him. And then, so it was kind of like, it became that. Mm -hmm. And it was working and it was working. It was working very well. And we started to find our, our rhythm in that, you know, and it became a lot of Sean just really taking it. And by the end, it was like Sean was producing it, you know? And so- and it was Sean and I in there just like six days a week. Again, I was saying like, in like from, you know, early afternoon to night, you know, um, uh, and we just, we found a really great rhythm working together and yeah, that's kind of how it came. Wow. And it was like the last song. I just thought, ain't it tragic? And I was just like, I think that's the album. Okay. <laughs> so that's how the title came about. <laughs> Literally. I went in to do one of my vocal takes. It was like one of the end vocal, like the, the last song that we were recording, which was Gimme Gimme. Mm -hmm. And I just thought of it as a lyric and I was like, ain't it tragic? And I was like, I already have all the lyrics written for this song. And and I was just like, that's a great band. Hey, Sean. And I took my, ain't it tragic? I just thought of a really cool title. It's, and he was like, oh, that's it. Yeah. That's so fucking good. And it just that's, stuck. That's <laughs> awesome. That is yeah. awesome. When you said you were re like at a rehearsal studio recording, like what was that like? You'd have to wait. <laughs> and if you heard the band next door starting, you'd have to what scrap the the session. No, we just, we just kept it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. We were just like, you know, what? it's, it's muffled enough. And you know, you just, there's so many tricks of a, of a, of a studio you can do. Right. Um, so that's what I loved about it. You know, very DIY and, what goes goes you know sure it just that's... makes it makes the story you know like mm -hmm. it's just don't stop for that kind of thing you know it's like it used to it, we could have at one point you know if like you were in a studio and you're like oh there's somebody back there things get very it's like who fucking cares you know like they won't hear it at all they won't you know <laughs> and it's right you can you can't even hear it you that's know it's funny. so directional you know and right so. well uh... Well, you guys are doing a, you have your headlining tour, your first one in what, three years? Yeah. Yeah. How exciting is that? Very exciting. We've, we've been rehearsing. I'm actually going to go over um, for some rehearsal right after this. Um, we have our friend that we actually made friends with, um, our neighbor. 
during the pandemic. He's a guitar player. He's going to be joining us. <laughs> oh, really? That's yeah. cool. So I don't have to play too much guitar. And it's just like, especially with this new album, there's a lot of layers that I believe would would be unfortunate to miss. Um, so I was just like, let's get like another dude, you know. And you're like, hey, you play guitar? <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah. So you play guitar and you're really good at harmonies. Come on. <laughs> Come on over. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, fuck yeah, dude, of course. So That's it's so really cool. fun. Yeah. Yeah. So um so your neighbors in the be, band. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys had a pl- chance to play it? Or not at like all? Like live? Yeah, like live since the pandemic. Mm, well, we did like an online thing with okay. our, our buddies in ba- uh, Bad Flower. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did like a, I think there was like a few bands. It was like for his birthday and he raised some money for um some, probably an animal charity, I believe, which is great. Okay. Nice. Um. So yeah, we did that. The, the the live stream but not in, in front of people yet right well yeah. that'll be I mean, exciting we did it in front of the other bands but right <laughs> but not like in a like a show setting no it's exciting i mean we literally we were on tour right before the the, the pandemic too uh-huh. it wasn't a headlining tour but we were on on the road with bad flower and um we also did ship rocked as well oh cool and and like right after that it was like oh this thing the corona it was like beer no but <laughs> that like, was the thing in the beginning <laughs> yeah, i remember I seeing that on like on facebook or whatever it was like corona beer yeah. causes yeah i'm like what what, what is this? yeah is that funny it was such a fucking it was such people were like what it, this is a joke like right. come on it's the fucking flu like we get it every year whatever <laughs> so now, a year, no, two I years have. later we're still sitting yeah. here <laughs> exactly oh my gosh so it kind of happened at a at a great time. It's like we didn't we it's not like we we had like every opportunity. Like we got to squeeze in, you know, some shows right before it all happened and we got to start the album, mm-hmm. you know? So I I I think we're lucky in that sense, you know. Now you got um, a record and a headline tour to support it. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's pretty incredible. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And I some of the shows you guys are doing are, are amazing too. I mean, you're doing that uh that festival in kentucky with like metallica and yeah. uh, a bunch of bands on it are Nine you doing the summer too. fest with yeah yeah uh the alice in chains i think or jane's addiction or somebody else is on. there's a yeah, bunch jane's of bands addiction. on that one yeah yeah uh and then you're also playing the summer fest too which is huge that's right that's our first show the 17th yeah wow so in about 10 days except yeah. I, anything ah. like, are, 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 are you guys are you nervous at all or what Oh yeah, I'm okay. talking about it. I'm like, fucking, That's fine. yeah, well, shaking. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm sure you guys will kill it. You've been doing this for ten years, you said. Exactly. Plus years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, Emily, for doing this. I really appreciate it, dude. Thank you. Um, I have one more question for you, though, real quick. Uh, okay. Do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Just don't do it. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, just give up. <laughs> give up. Give up now. I told you, like, it's been 10 years and we're still trying to do this. Um, no. Uh, you know what I've learned through it all? It's just sticking to what you know is you. I don't know. It's so hard to say it without sounding so cliche, but if there's every, any doubt, just don't do it. You know, like always stick to your gut feeling about something, even when it comes to business. Um, usually the first reaction is the, the the proper one. The first thought. Don't, you know, don't like mull it over too much. Don't overthink too much. Just what you got to do what's like innate for you and what's um, what's true for you. You know, and that goes in so many different levels. 